Missionaries and the Native Americans by Dwayne Cole. While we hear a lot about the American Indians' battle to retain their sovereignty, we do not hear a lot about the attempt of the American Indians to work with the Europeans and integrate the European way of life. Prominent missionaries from Europe played a major role in mediating the plight of the American Indian in the inevitable European surge onto the North American continent. Missionaries play an important role in deciphering the languages of the natives and tending to their well-being, both physically and spiritually. As a result, many missionaries were able to win over the respect of the Native Americans. In this presentation, I will introduce you to a few prominent missionaries that sacrificed their livelihood and at times even their life ministering to the American Indian. One of the earliest missionaries was Bartholomew de la Casa, a 16th century Spanish historian, social reformer, and Dominican friar, best known for protecting the American Indians from mistreatment from the Spanish conquistadors. This earned him the title of Protector of the Indians. His so-called new laws were adopted in 1542, which mandated the protection of certain Indian rights and the abolition of slavery. In 1544, La Casa returned to New Spain as the Bishop of Caiaphas, then in northern Guatemala, but later part of southern Mexico. His efforts to enforce the new laws were met with stiff resistance by many colonists. La Casa returned to Spain in 1547. He spent his remaining years in the pursuit of justice for the American natives, primarily through publication of pamphlets and presentation of petitions to the crown. According to the no Nebraska Studies website, John Dunbar and Samuel Alice were perhaps the most adventurous of the early missionaries to Nebraska. They accompanied, accompanied Indian agent Don John Duarte to his Indian agency at Bellevue in 1834. Duarte distributed annuity goods to the Pawnees as prescribed by the Treaty of 1833. He explained to the chiefs of the four bands of Pawnee the reasons for the presence of Dunbar and Alice. The Pawnee immediately invited the two men to travel with them on the com coming winter buffalo hunt. Big Axe, chief of the Lou band, told the missionaries, quote, I love the white men. The white men cannot cry in the prairie, but I will th be there to assist him. I want to know something of the great religion which you have among you, and if any of those people who come to teach us about the great spirit and how to write will come to my lodge, I will see that they will shall be neither hungry nor cold." Unquote. David Brennard was perhaps the best known of all the Indian missionaries. David was born in Haddam, Connecticut, April 4, 1718. He was a convert of the Great Awakening. Then entered Yale College in 1739 to prepare for the ministry. He was appointed by the Society for Propagating Christian Knowledge as a Presbyterian missionary to the Indians in Massachusetts in 1742. In 1843, he began his work among Indians of Kanawakek. For time, he lived in wigwam with the Indians and eating their food. Soon after his death of tuberculosis in 1747, Jonathan Edwards published an account of Bernard's life together with his diary, which proved a tremendous stimulus in promoting the cause of the mission to the Indians. Samuel Wilchester 
was a missionary to the Cherokee people in the early 1800s. Samuel didn't realize early on that he'd be part of a national court bat battle fighting, not with guns, arrows, or rifles, but with the rule of law. In the court case, Worcester versus Georgia, the U.S. Supreme Court held in 1832 that the Cherokee Indians constituted a nation holding distinct sovereign powers. So Samuel, upon ordination, was thought to be sent to the Far East, but found to be assigned to Bernard's mission to the Cherokee. His intent was to make the whole tribe English in their language, civilized in their habits, and Christian in their religion. Ultimately, despite Samuel's determination to the point of being jailed, four years of hard labor, Samuel and the Cherokee lost their legal battle and the Cherokee land was annexed to the state of Georgia. The Cherokee were forced to move in what is known now as the Trail of Tears. Throughout his mission, Samuel ran the Cherokee Press newspaper, which gave a voice to the Cherokee people. He translated a good portion of the Bible, which he wasn't able to finish upon his death, into the Cherokee language, an activist for the Cherokee people overall. The intentions of the missionary to Native American peoples were dynamic and fruitful for the most part. Missionaries played a vital role in interpretations and peacemaking. The missionary work goes on even to this day on reservations and schools. There will always be the need to understand and respect the Indian ways. The strength of the missionary was to live educate, and work with the Native Americans to gain this respect and understanding. You would be hard pressed to find a reservation or community of Native Americans that do not have a church or some missionary entity peppered throughout their land. Thank you for listening and watching. <laughs>